What I'm showing on the screen is a template I built to calculate the safety stock and the reorder points when you carry multiple products. So we have quite a few columns that I'll explain over time, but let me start with just the definition here that we have for safety stock. So if we look at the formula, we can see that we need four different numbers to be able to calculate the safety stock. Two of them relate to demand. Now I've done it in terms of days, so I'm going to reference daily demand. You can do it in terms of weeks, you can do it in terms of months, you just have to be consistent in all of your numbers. So we're looking for the maximum daily demand and the average daily demand. And I will show you later on two different ways to calculate these numbers. One will be based on historical sales and one will be based on a forecasted demand. You can use either one. I do have some clients where we actually look at it both ways because if they've had stock out issues in the past, they find that their historical sales are lower than what they anticipate for the future. And therefore they tend to lean on the forecast a little bit more and sometimes even land somewhere in between. It's a little bit of a judgment call. So the other two numbers that we need for the safety stock are related to the lead time. So the lead time is the time between when you place an order with a supplier and when that inventory that you've ordered actually arrives at your location. So whether that's your own warehouse, your own factory, but essentially, you know, where you store your main amount of inventory. So let's take a look at just the lead time, because in this template, we're going to have to put in the average lead time and the maximum lead time. And again, I've done this in days for every single product that we carry. So how do we do this? We need to be able to take a look at your historical purchases to know for all of the purchases you did in say the last six months or the last year, what was the date on which you placed your order and when did it actually arrive? And I've actually created a separate spreadsheet that I'll call lead time history to be able to track all of those historical purchases of inventory. You can see in this file that I have all of my SKU numbers and you can see that I've got multiple products in the same file. I've got my product description, that's not really a necessary column, but as long as you've got the independent number here, the SKU, because that's your unique identifier usually in your computer system. And maybe you're tracking the purchase order when you export your data. But the important part here, so with this tracks the date on which you placed this order and the date on which you received the inventory into your facility. So whether that's your warehouse, your own factory, you know, you could be working out of your garage, it's okay. Wherever you currently keep your inventory. And then this final column is really a subtraction between the two dates. So it's just taking January 1, saying, okay, between January 1 and January 22, we just subtract those dates and therefore the lead time on this purchase was 21 days. So if we now go to our next product, same thing. So we placed an order, say, on January 3. It arrived at our facility on January 26, and therefore the lead time was actually 23 days. Now we go through an entire history here, and you can put in as many records as you wish, and it will calculate the lead times for you. Now if you recall the safety stock formula, there were two lead times that we needed. For every product that we have, we needed the average lead time and we needed the maximum lead time. So these are just pivot tables in Excel where we point to all of our data here and we ask it to roll up our data in a pivot table and display for us each of the products. So this one is, is by SKU, this one is by product description. It's exactly the same. I'm just putting in both here to see, you know, you can use whichever one is more convenient for you. And then for each of those products, we're asking the pivot table to show us the average lead time. And I'll show you the pivot table options here if you're not familiar with that. So you can see I'm grabbing the lead time column and I'm telling it display the average of that number. And then I'm grabbing that exact same column again and saying, you know, instead of the average, this time I want you to display the maximum. So this gives us the average lead time and the maximum lead time for every single one of our products individually. Now, how to use this template? So you would replace all of this data with your own purchases 
and you know try to keep the same column structure here if you don't want to track purchase order numbers that's fine if you don't want to track you know the product names that's fine you can just leave these columns blank um, but definitely the important part would be to have that unique identifier which is your SKU or your item number and to have you know the start and end dates so it can do a calculation for you on actual lead times now if you were to replace your data in this section what you do is you then come over onto this tab and all you have to do is kind of right click and click refresh and Excel is going to recalculate these tables based on your own data. So even two months later, you could say, OK, I'd like to see you know, how I'm doing on lead times. You could put in a fresh set of data or you could append more records to the bottom of this. Just click over to this tab, right click and hit refresh. So this now gives us our average lead time and our max lead time. And what we actually do with those numbers is we pop back to our template and for each of our products, you can see we want to input our average lead time and our maximum lead time for all of our products. Now, when you're looking at this template, you'll notice that some of the columns are white and some of them are kind of like an orangey color. The orange colored ones are where you're actually going to type something in. So I'm actually asking you to input the numbers into columns G and column F based on the average lead time and the maximum lead time that you've calculated from this other spreadsheet. Now, I've done it as a separate spreadsheet to calculate your lead times because if you already have an established way that you like to do it anyway, as long as you can get the average lead time and the maximum lead time, um, you can do it any way you wish and then just input these numbers into the template file. And I'll explain more about some of these other tabs a little later on.